Hey guys, it's Ian here, and I'm going to show you the uh, small solar upgrade I did to my 2509S. This is a 2022 model. Um, and I did this small solar upgrade so that I could do boondocking more effectively. I went out camping uh, three weeks ago, and it was pretty much a dry camp here in southern Nevada. And my battery ran out, and the heater was not kicking on when it was 35 degrees at night. So I decided to make a small investment and increase the solar. So let me show you how I did that first by uh, showing you what I did for power and batteries and then getting on the roof and showing you what I did for solar. So the first thing you need to think about when you uh, do this upgrade is what kind of batteries you're going to actually get. I went with 300 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate. Um, you can use AGM or uh, gel if you want to. I like this because I have more control over uh, where I place the battery, how I place the battery, and how much um, I get out of the battery. The only thing I'd recommend when you're thinking about your batteries is the size. Um, I'm in my late 30s and this 70 pound battery is easy to, to pick up and move around. It's kind of a pain to maneuver inside of the actual uh, trailer. So if, if you don't want to manage all that, you might want to get smaller batteries and stack them. Um, or find some other place to put them. Just be mindful that 70 pounds may not seem like a lot to some of you younger people out there, but moving it and maneuvering it can be difficult. The other thing I had to figure out was where to place it. So this is what it looks like uh, on the passenger side of the pass-through. And in order to put it here, I had to actually remove uh, two thin panels. One that went across uh, um, from the back to the front and then one that was the other direction. And they put that in there so it hides all of the wiring. You can see the, the wires that they've got in here. Um, I had to remove those panels so I got more space here. And also because I just didn't want to have to deal with panels every single time I wanted to get in here and work on something that has to do with the power of the trailer. Let me remove the battery or actually get out of the way and show you where I, um, how I routed uh, these wires from the battery and from uh, the inverter and other parts of the trailer to the particular battery. Uh, before I do that, you'll notice I created some bracketing. Whatever you do with your batteries, make sure that you create some bracketing so that when the battery uh, is moving on the road and it gets jostled around, it's not gonna flip flop everywhere. Uh, these are heavy batteries and the last thing you want is for them to be banging into your trailer and aspects of your trailer without any kind of support. Now with the battery somewhat out of the way, All the wiring is gonna go here. And this is actually the location where the Murphy bed, what I'm showing you up top, slides down into when you put the Murphy bed up. It actually slides on top of these wires. Uh, the mattress is actually resting on the floor. Uh, you have to bring the Murphy bed up and uh, in order to get to it. And those black wires, as you can see, those are the wires that are used for the battery. So let me show you how the battery's actually wired into the rest of the trailer. So this right here is where the battery used to sit, the Deep Cycle AGM. Um, I wanna show you from this angle what it looks like on the underside, because that's gonna give you a very clear uh, idea of the kind of wiring we have, but you're not gonna to touch any of it. So here's a junction box with a whole bunch of wires going in and out of it. You can see that some of the wires are going up through the actual trailer into that area right there with a bunch of silicone. That is where the battery wires go into the other side of the pass-through for the inverter. So what ends up happening is that the batteries go up through there, one battery wire goes up through there, and then the rest of the battery wires are actually connected to this side of the actual trailer frame. So before I show you how I connected the new battery, let's talk about how the old battery is connected. The old battery has a red terminal here, that's positive, and a black terminal here, that's a negative. And this is gonna be my battery for the example. The red terminal had a wire, this is the actual wire, and it connected from the terminal, and it connected onto the frame in this box right here. It's a battery positive, it's also the inverter positive. And then from that section right there, it routes and it goes into that battery disconnect right there. So you turn this off, 
There's no power uh, being drawn from the positive end of the battery because it is disconnected. The negative terminal had two wires from it. There was a thin wire coming out from the terminal. It came out of the terminal and it connected right here. That is the ground on the frame. And then it had another wire coming out, a thicker wire coming out. It came all the way out. It came down underneath the trailer and it went up into that section of wire right there. And then from there, it came out of that hole, snuck all the way through and into the inverter on the negative side. So let's talk about rewiring. So first of all, this is the other side of the pass-through and I got rid of two panels. One panel was here, one panel was there. I got rid of the panels so I could have access to the trailer. I had to actually cut this suction out all the way because it was all uh, wood. There was just a little tiny access hole, but not enough for me to get in there and do anything I needed to do. So I cut that and then I put some duct tape so I didn't cut myself on the poor cut job I did. So here's how I did this. The first thing I did is I removed every single wire from the battery, all three. I want no hot wires, I removed the battery. My All the wires are cold, there's no hot wires. And the first thing I did is I got rid of this wire. I also got rid of the small ground wire and I took the thick negative wire and I actually connected it to the frame where the old ground was. That was routed through the trailer. Once again, I'll show you what that looks like. I was routed through the trailer and all the setup of wires. And then and, and it's connected to the inverter. So what I did is I then unscrewed the inverter and I brought it out so I could work on it right here. So this will be our inverter, our small inverter. It has a the red wire and the black wire. I removed that black wire and I, I sent it through the pass-through again to the other side of the trailer and connected it to the battery. Then what I did is I got a, another battery, a black wire, and I connected it to this battery and I snuck it all the way through this pass-through, right, all the way through that pass-through and I reattached it to the negative end of our inverter. So now the inverter has a negative uh, connection from the battery. So I connected it here and I put it back up here. I remounted it with those screws that I came with. So playing with the inverter is done. The ground wire is done and the negative battery to the inverter is done. The only thing I had to do was the positive. And for that was, was pretty straightforward. I got a wire, cut it to length, and I actually pushed it up through here into that set of, of, of all that wires. It was pretty easy to find a spot, to be honest. Not an issue at all to, to, to shove a wire up there. And on one end, I connected it to the old fuse box junction area where the old positive terminal was at. So it was here, snaked all the way up through all that set of wires, all the way over the trailer where the, where the Murphy bed goes and then brought up to the positive end of the battery here. Um, the wire that comes with the trailer is two gauge. If that matters to you guys, if you care, you're gonna want two gauge wire to keep it the same. We only really need four gauge wire for this project um, unless you're using an extreme amount of amperage or going an extreme length of um, wiring for your, your, your trailer. So after that was done, um, and after I secured the battery and cleaned up all my mess, the wiring for the battery was done. So once again, just to reiterate, positive from here, snake through, came out the bottom of the trailer and is now on the positive connection terminal, the original one right there. The old negative battery wire that went to the inverter is now the ground. 
that it snaked through the uh, trailer into the uh, inverter. Um, it's no longer in the inverter, it's now in the battery. And then connected on the battery on that side is another wire that comes all the way through to the inverter. So I hope that was clear enough. I hope that was thorough enough for the wiring of the battery. Honestly, guys, it was pretty straightforward and not um, a difficult task at all. So here are the panels mounted on top of the roof. I was able to use the same junction. And what I had to buy was a few extension cables. I got a 10 gauge wire. I didn't want anything smaller than that. 14 would work. I just would rather have a 10. And then I got uh, several splitters. You can see them right here. Um, this one, for instance, is a female and two males. These will take females. Um, and then I got my solar panels. These are um, rich solar, 100 watts. The reason why I went with these panels is because if you know anything about solar, and I just learned this myself, um, when you wire up solar, you can wire up in two ways, parallel or series. I was gonna wire these up in parallel and the way that works is you add up all the amperage uh, ratings of all the panels you have. And they can all be different amps. So I think the um, Go Power is 9.3 and uh, these panels right here are like 5.2 amps or 5.21 amps. So you add all those amps together and that gives you your base amperage if it's over 30 amps, you're gonna exceed the, the limits of your uh, charge controller, which is okay. You're just not gonna get as much power as you expected. Um, you're gonna take those amps and then you're gonna multiply it by the voltage of the panel that is the weakest voltage out of all of them. So if you have a solar panel that is five amps and 10 volts, you multiply those together and you get a 50 amp solar panel. If it's five amps and 20 volts, you multiply those together, that's how you get a 100 watt solar panel. So the way these work is that these rich solar panels are 5.4 amps, somewhere around there, and 18.6 volts. This right here is 9.3 amps and 18.6 volts. So you add up the amps together and multiply by the lowest voltage rating of the panel that you have on your roof. The reason why that's super important is because if your voltage rating for one of your solar panels is significantly lower than the other solar panels, you're going to bring down the effectiveness of all of your solar panels across the board. So that monologue was all there to say, I did a lot of research and I found a solar panel that was 100 watts that had an 18.6 voltage rating, which is exactly the same as the Go Power that came with the trailer. These were about $100 per 100 watts. This was about $200 per 100 watts. So I went with these panels because they're cheaper and had good ratings on Amazon and they work perfectly with my setup. So I have just over 30 amps at 100% sun coverage, perfect sun, everything. Just over 30 amps at 18.6 volts, which is gonna give me about 600 watts of solar. All right, that being said is I've got these connectors. Every single panel has its own uh, fuse on the negative wire. So here's a 15 uh, amp fuse on every uh, panel because when you set them up in parallel, you could have the risk of having voltage run backwards and I did not want my panels destroyed. So I have that set up. And then the new panels, they're actually not drilled into the trailer at all. You'll see there that they're not drilled in. I did a lot of research about how to get this done. I did not want to drill holes to the top of my roof. So I got this 3M VHB tape. This is double-sided tape, and it is really, really strong tape. I mean, I'm putting lots of, lots of force on this thing, and it's not coming up. Like, you can see, as I do that, you can see I'm actually bending. I'm not sure, it's probably moving. I'm actually bending the metal before I'm getting any anything from the trailer roof coming up. So these are, yeah, these are taped on, taped on solar panels. So I have four of them up here. 
all connected with my Ys all the way over into the original port. I have the ability, because it's set up this way, to do another panel here if I want to, and then I can put two panels um, in the middle, and I can still get up here and do work on the roof if I need to. All that being done, this was about with a buddy and I. We spent about three or four hours doing all of it together from start to finish. And now I have almost 600 watts of solar, 300 uh, amp hours of power, and I can go dry camping with zero issues in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.